Okay, so some more components have arrived today and uh, what I'm missing at the moment are batteries and motors, so and no, no flying, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, the majority of the electronics is here and I can make good progress. Um, so today has arrived the oops, it's the Runcam Phoenix 2 Joshua Bardwell edition so this is a high TVL camera so it should look nice in the goggles it's also wide uh, very wide lens so um, should be able to see a lot uh, and it supports UART control so we can use uh, RG Pilot's uh, control for that um, also uh, What's arrived is the the actual TBS uh, Unified Pro HB Nano. Uh, um, sorry, Unified Pro uh, HV uh, VTX, um, and this has uh, the, one of the reasons I sort of I decided on this was this has a MMCX to SMA adapter. Um, that will fit quite nicely on the um, uh, aerial mount. So you can see that there's a TPU 3D printed aerial mount that the SMA adapter will fit into there and I can screw that in and that will sit sort of on the back there and uh, it'll sit where um, uh, if you were going for a digital setup where your DJI Air unit would sit. And that's the nice thing about these components is you could easily modify this to do a digital version um, just by replacing the, um, the VTX. Uh, and also my tracer module has arrived. Uh, with the Immortal T antenna. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Immortal T. Uh, so this this frame has a you can mount a, a, a radio transmitter in the bottom of the GPS here, and then stick the um, the antenna wires out the side. Unfortunately, Immortal T, because it's not a monopole, won't fit in the tubes that you would sit there. And if actually if you did that, you'd end up with the aerials square to each other which is not great from a diversity perspective and I've actually had issues with aerials on the back of um, antenna on the back of uh, quads and so I find you get much better uh, range and diversity if you mount on the arms perpendicular to the arms and uh, these are actually designed to mount to be strapped to the arms um, and that's what, what I'm going to do. I'm going to strap them to the undersides on the back arms so I get a full 90 degrees between the ankles, uh, uh, arms. Because um, if I mounted them on the top, the props would uh, chop them off and I've had that problem in the past. But as you can see, the slight flaw in my plan is that these are just too short for the arms this length. I mean, if I'm going in there, that's way, way, way away. And actually what I'm going to do is because I'm mounting them on the underside, the, I'm going to run the cable through this hole and put the uh, um, uh, tracer unit there, or well, at least that's the plan. So I've actually ordered, you can get an extended version of these which has another 5 centimeters on, so I'm going to get a couple of those and then they'll sit nicely um, uh, under the arms with enough reach uh, to get to uh, the tracer module. Uh, and uh, one of the things you've got to plan quite carefully here is the cable runs. So um, one thing, for instance, is that the GPS unit sits way at the back here, uh, um, held on by these uh, uh, 3D printed uh, units. And so we're going to run a cable all the way from the G GPS to the UART and uh, I2C connections on the flight controller there. Um, similarly, the, uh, the VTX needs to, I'm going to use CRSF to control the VTX and so the VTX needs to be controlled by the tracer unit, but 
the video signal needs to go obviously onto the flight controller for the SD to work so I'm going to have to uh, wire that up um, appropriately and you can see the cables are nicely long enough for that uh, and um, I was a bit worried about the GPS uh, which we looked at before it's going to sit there what will the cables be like but Matek in their infinite wisdom has just put loads and loads of cable on here so that is easily easily enough to get me from uh, the GPS unit to um, to the flight controller and then similarly the camera will need to be um, wired up to the video in on the um, the flight controller but I think there will easily be plenty of cable to do that. So there's the little cable that comes with it. So you can see that uh, that's, that's easily plenty of enough cable. So, um, so I'm going to sort of uh, assemble a bit more the frame, particularly the back and the posts and the camera section, so I can size these up uh, um, better. Uh, uh, and I'll show you that and then I'll start um, uh, wiring up the flight controller. Okay. All right, so uh, I've, uh, as you can see, I've just popped the camera mount on the, um, the frame, which makes it even longer. Uh, and I've laid out the little pillars that uh, amount to the frame and these are almost all fixed on with this these M3 8mm uh, bolts uh, hex bolts that you can see here which is kindly described in the documentation um, I almost had a heart attack because as you can see these bolts in the middle are on this very thickest part of the plate and uh, clearly M380 is not going to get all the way through and I thought maybe there was a hole, a, a, a hollow underneath and was going to, I started disassembling it uh, and then found in the box these M316 uh, bolts which are mentioned in the manifest list here but not in the build at all so I'm certain that these are for the four uh, pillars here and so the frame can stay assembled uh, and I use those for the four middle ones. I use M38 for everywhere else, um, both top and bottom, and uh, for this uh, standoff that goes in the middle here. Uh, the middle standoff is 22 mil, and these these standoffs are 20 mil. So you can just you can just see that they're one slightly longer than the other. So the 22 mil is the longer one, 20 mil is the shorter one, and then similar, there's slightly smaller M2. 22 mil standoffs that go at the back here um, and so I'm going to uh, assemble all of these put them on so that I can see where the um, uh, roof goes assemble this part here uh, and uh, then it should uh, start looking a bit more like a quadcopter and um, uh, I can really tell where uh, where things are going I should also say, just before I do that, uh, I fly to very conveniently included a spare of everything. So there is one extra of every single component here, but obviously apart from the arms and things. So of all the standoffs, there is an extra standoff, just in case you strip the thread or something. And similarly with, you can see there's actually five M16, uh, M3 16 mil bolts, even though you only need four of them. So kudos to iFly. Also, just one other thing to notice, um, I've lucked out here, but there is actually a, uh, obviously the top plate has a certain way up uh, to go, but the bottom plate also has a certain, there's a wrong way and a right way for the bottom plate. And you can see that these two post holes at the back have a countersunk. Uh, and I think that's supposed to take the post rather than a, a, a bolt in particular coming through from the bottom. So countersunk. Up one. All right. So I've mounted the 
posts and um, uh, they're mounted by screwing in these hex bolts from the underside. So a couple of things to, and I sort of talked about the lengths, a couple of things to notice here. Uh, one is that the size for these middle posts is quite long. So um, I don't think they're actually marked on the documentation. So these are uh, M3 16 mil, I think. I think that's right. The, those are the only ones that were left that I couldn't find a space for. So I think these are M3 16 mil going through, four of those. Um, and clearly, because they've changed the design, they've sort of changed the supply as well a little bit. So these, you'll notice on, I don't know whether you can see that, but on a lot of these uh, bolts, there's they've got, um, thread lock sort of pre-applied to the bolts which is great saves uh, avoids ha having to put the thread lock on but they haven't done it for these m316 um, uh, bolts so uh, if you do want to put the thread lock on i haven't but you know you can do uh, then you'll need to do it for for those um and i put the the camera cage on here i mean it's just kind of loose uh, and i've also put the TPU assembly for the GPS unit here and this actually requires M2 uh, bolts I think they are it says on the docks I think they're 8mm 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 M2 bolts and uh, again you'll need a, a hex or allen key uh, that fits M2 generally takes a slightly smaller allen key you probably have to get one especially um, uh, to tighten these because they don't they don't come with a kit. Uh, so little design change from um, the instructions. So in the instructions, there's a separate G, uh, um, GPS mount that you bolt on, but in this, the the frame at the bottom is all one piece, you know, one piece of carbon fiber, and you put the GPS mount directly on the frame. And uh, these. Um, eight millimeter M2 bolts. There are actually six of them in the pack and although they don't say, you can use the final two to um, go into the TPU underneath. So the instructions say that there are M2 six millimeter, but there's nothing in the pack. So I, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, M28 is correct and that that works um, quite well. Uh, this is for the, this is the TPU piece for the um, antenna uh, and you can see that the top plate just goes straight on. So I was a little bit worried about, so the back, there's a hole here for the battery lead. I mean, this, this is um, not the actual battery lead, but this, it serves an example to come up here. And I was a bit, a bit worried about the, the amount of current that might be going through this. Uh, and interfering with the GPS because the GPS has got a compass on this as well and as everybody knows GPS and compass are very very important to good RG pilot behaviour so I was sort of a bit worried about the interference but actually there's a decent distance between the lead and the um, GPS so I think I'll go with the, the, the battery um, mounted on the back rather than on the forward uh, forward and then in terms of placement of the item, so obviously the GPS is going to go there. I'm going to put the um, uh, VTX here where, where there's sort of space for a digital thing as well. I could pop out there. Um, the uh, Lumenier uh, flight control is a little arrow which is supposed to point forward. And you'll see that um, uh, that's also on the top. So the, the, the way that they want you to mount it is this way. And actually that's quite good because the SD card points inwards. So the only way you're going to get the SD card out is to take the top plate off. And if it was sandwiched underneath, that would be a real pain. Um, so I'm going to go with what, uh, what they've got here. Uh, I'm going to mount the um, tracer module just here and uh, the immortal T's will go through that hole and out, out the bottom there. 
um, camera on the front, obviously, and as, as I said before, the cable runs are uh, long enough. So in terms of the UARTs, um, so uh, there's space for a GPS here, which I think is uh, UART. Oh, I can't even read it, so let me just uh, get this right. Uh, yeah, so this is UART 2 is for the GPS, which is these bottom row of pins here. Um, and actually there's UART 6 over here, which we could use for um, RC input, but actually it, it by default doesn't have DMA enabled. And if, as we're using CRSF, we really want DMA enabled because of the high board rate. So I'm actually going to use UART 7 here behind the GPS which is equivalent to telemetry one. Uh, and then the VTX will plug in the front here. Um, the uh, serial connection to the VTX will go straight into Tracer, so we don't really care about that. And then the um, serial connection from the camera will come in at the front as well. So there's a spot for camera, and we can use whatever UART is at the front here. It doesn't really matter. Um, either three or four or even one to control the camera um, and there's a array of a whole host of nine nine volt supply there that I'll use to power both the camera and the VTX um, don't want to power them off the battery as we get too much interference I've made that mistake before um, so yeah it'll look roughly like that and with this cable here and some wiring from um, tracer here uh, and then wiring from the camera here and uh, I'll I'll just solder these wires directly to the flight controller and I'll probably just remove these plugs from the VTX and again solder directly to the flight controller there's enough length uh, length there okay so that's kind of the the bottom frame assembled and I know where I'm going to put things uh, and um, I'm ready to uh, solder everything up, but uh, before I do that, I'm going to load Ardu Pilot onto the flight controller um, because what I found in the past is that um, sometimes the I, I've had interference between things in DFU mode, if you can believe it. So I've had <laughs> I've had flight controllers where you plug in the GPS, try and go into DFU mode and it doesn't work. So I think always it's a good idea when you get a flight controller is load RG Pilot up with nothing connected so that you know that it works. Um, uh, and, uh, and then once you start soldering things on, if there's a problem, then you know that it's something you've soldered on. Um, so I'm gonna uh, load RG Pilot up first. Um, before I start soldering things on. Uh, I'm also going to um, put the battery leads uh, onto the ESC uh, so that I can actually power the flight controller from the battery. Uh, and um, uh, it, make sure that pass through works because I want to make sure that the ESC has got the right version of BL Heli on before I assemble everything because sometimes if pass through doesn't work then you've got to use uh, an Arduino or something like that and disassemble everything. Um, I'm actually going to cheat a little bit because I don't have the batteries yet and I don't have um, the ST90 plugs so I'm going to use another uh, uh, ESC that I've got just to power this from the battery and just to make sure everything works um, and then I'll, I'll do the, the soldering of the battery leads a bit later. Okay, and that will all happen in the next video. Thank you.